Probably everyone in the modern world once saw a video of an atomic blast, rather here on YouTube or on TV. Some of the most famous capturings were made at the Nevada test site in the US that was established in 1951. The films out of that period have an eerie, unreal look to them, showing those huge atomic mushroom clouds out of a time where the word atomic stood for progress, technology of the future and top of the edge technology. In 1963 the United States and the Soviet Union agreed to stop testing atomic bombs in the atmosphere and continued of testing underground, which became less visually impressive. But when watching these old videos of an overground atomic explosion, besides the astonishing shockwave and mushroom cloud, there is something else that often been seen in the atmosphere. These parallel trails of smoke. They were not caused by some sort of debris or by accident, but have a scientific background. For that we need to go back to the first nuclear bomb test ever. The Trinity test took place on July 16th, 1945 as part of the Manhattan Project. Berlin Brixner, head photographer for the Trinity test, made an interesting discovery in his photographs. In this picture you can see a white lion or cable that belonged to a barrage balloon, a zeppelin that carried instruments and cameras to record the initial moment of the detonation. The cable however was almost invisible due to the distance and resolution of the film material. It only got visible in this shot because it vaporized due to the enormous heat development in the first milliseconds of the explosion. So what we basically see here is smoke that comes off the cable. As the shock front passed in front of the cable, an apparent break appeared in the cable. An optical illusion caused by refraction of light by the compressed air behind the shock wave. This phenomenon caught the attention of the scientists as they needed a way to measure and calculate the velocity and speed of the shock wave in the open space. So they came up with the idea of using rockets or the smoke trails of them to gather more detailed data of the explosion. Measuring the shock front in function of space and time, they now could calculate the shock velocity. With that data, they could first calculate the shock overpressure versus space around the burst. The rockets got fired seconds before the blast and were located perpendicular to the line of sight of the cameras. They were shot in an angle of 85 degrees radially away from the point of view to make the trails appear straight lines. The detonation was then photographed and filmed as it passed in front of these trails. The progress of the shockwave was then followed by observing the hooks in the rocket trails at the shock front. The famous fireball and mushroom cloud seen in the videos is not a shockwave. Only in the first milliseconds the fireball and shockwave are one and the same. After that the shockwave remains invisible until it hits or interacts with any materials. Besides the smoke trail rockets, mortar puffs and modified jados, assistant takeoff rockets were used to give a visual indication of shape and speed of the shockwave. The motor puffs were created with shells that contained flash powder, similar used in training grenades for the military. The jados were used to create huge amount of white smoke close to the center of detonation shortly before the blast. Each test was then captured with a big amount of 16 and 35 mm cameras filming the detonation in multiple angles and speeds from a standard 24 frames per second in real time to high speed capturing of 1000 frames using the C4 rotating mirror high-speed camera. By counting the frames, scientists could now calculate the speeds and velocity of the detonation, all without the use of supercomputers and 3D modeling. Pretty fascinating. I hope I could awake your curiosity with this video. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments. Until then, see ya!